Hey everybody, it's Alvin at Crosscut Coyote Folk Bench. Hope everybody's doing good. We're back for part seven of how I went about making this graffiti gig bag. Um, we're gaining some ground uh, and I'm hoping that y'all are, are doing the same thing with your creative uh, uh, efforts. Uh, looks like the one holiday season is gone and the other one is coming in. Uh, Christmas, of course, is coming. Everybody's prepping for that. Uh, maybe something that you create is going to be under somebody's tree. You know, that'd be great. You know, anyways, I'm hoping that everybody's safe and keeping the smiles up. So, um, you know, we're going to see this gig bag to the finish. So without any further ado, let's go have some fun. Each bag I've made in the past was primarily designed for just one particular instrument. This particular gig bag is designed to house two bases. Therefore, its components are going to be slightly unique. This particular one comes with a divider. And this divider is a portable divider that is roped in with some cord and it sort of hangs loose. It's not a solid part of the bag. It can be removed. And I designed it like that on purpose in case I change my mind. Anyway, um, this is the first time I ever made one with a divider like this. So this is the construction of how this divider came to be. Being that the gig bag is on the reverse when it's finally completed, uh, it has to be turned inside out. So watching a gig bag give birth to itself is not exactly the easiest part of the feat. But with a little struggle, I still managed it. Like making a double gig bag in general, this particular approach that I'm using to cover the seams was another unique thing I had never done before. I understand it's called polling. I mean, whether I do it technically right or not, all I know is the little bit that I did really suited my purpose and I think I'm going to use this practice for the next gig bags that I create in the future. Now that the divider is modeled to the shape of the gig bag, it's got to be installed. But part of that installment means that I have to add a couple more features to it, which is I have to line the holes up near the tabs on the inside, mark them, and then burn through them so that I can use those loops to run the cords through when I go to thread the whole divider into the gig bag. And voila, it feels good when a plan comes together. Here's another feature. Usually when I make a gig bag, I like to make the gig bags with a tough bottom. Because when you really think about it, we tend to put our gig bags down on, on compromising surfaces. Whether they're, it's damp or they're a rugged terrain or something like that. Or they'll, something that'll stain the gig bag or possibly cause the bag to pick up moisture or something like that. So I like to design the bottom so they have a particular plate that's a little bit more resistant to rough treatment and or abuse. This pad will go on as a soft pad when it goes on the gig bag but once it's on and I get a chance to sew it on uh, I use like a um, again carpet wax thread to sew this particular gig bag cover on and then usually after I sew it on, I will coat it with a hard mixture, like uh, preferably glue and or and lacquer to make it more resistant to the elements.
Next would be making the shoulder harness. For a two banger gig bag like this, the harness straps would have to be a little tougher and I, I felt like they should be a little wider than the traditional straps because carrying that weight might cause the straps, thin straps to cut into your shoulders. So when I went to make the, the shoulder harness, I designed them so that the pads are a little wider. Now it's time to harden the bottom of the gig bag just before painting it. So what I like to use is either use a carpenter's glue like tight bond or use Mod Podge or something like that. A uh, liquid that's designed to be sort of like a, a glue and or a type of sealer. So I try to brush that in as, as good as, as well as I can to make sure it soaks from the high parts of the fabric to all the way to the base of the fabric. Uh, it just makes the bottom nice and hard and I'll leave it overnight the next thing and now at that point it's ready for some painting so this would be the first steps to the painting if you notice that I've already continued completed the harnesses and I got them covered to protect them from the overspray With the first application of paint, which you saw with the spray can, uh, I ran into an issue where I noticed that after it dried, it seemed like it sort of lightened up in some places where I didn't want it to lighten up. And that was pretty early on. That was before the gig bag was finished. So what I decided to do was uh, to enforce that color by just following up with uh, just uh, black acrylic paint, which I had to go back to painting, which I used to do with my other gig bags by hand in the first place. So I just went ahead and just did that. And so that just stiffens the bag a little bit more, which is fine with me. Um, and it also makes a clean surface to start the illustrations with. The first, I mean, the back part of the bag, the white part, is where I want to put my illustrations. So I painted that uh, with white to, to sort of give it that new canvas feel and everything. And I can just start fresh with the illustration, which before that I didn't have an idea of what, else, what illustration I wanted on it. So I had to take some time, pull together an illustration, or design of some sort and I wanted it to be a little bit more graffiti-esque you know and you know make it a design I hadn't done before so uh, that was my next approach and this next process will be about that but you'll see that on part eight you know the very probably the last video you know but you'll see that on part eight the next video piece that's coming up thanks again everybody for hanging out with me at Crosscut Coyote Folk Bench uh, hope everybody stays positive and again hang around positive people don't pretend you don't know who they are um, and you know who the bad ones are so you know don't pretend anyway um, stay happy keep a smile on but most of all be safe and continue to do your craft it, it's really important I really appreciate that and then um, for the most part uh, just maintain your art 
Again, Alvin at Crosscut Coyote Folk Bench. I'll see you next time.